All right, so both say good morning. Let's uh, let's begin. Today's daf is Chafalif. We have a beautiful Gemara ahead of us today. Today's daf is Chafalif. We are picking up at the Mishnah, which is Chaf Amud Bey's the last line. Ein maskil So we've actually made reference to this Mishnah before. One is not permitted to rent an akum, an idolater, a home in Eretz Yisrael. And of course, it goes without saying that you can't rent them fields. Now, we'll say we'll discuss the reasons for both of these prohibitions. Ubi Surya, what about in Surya? So I'll say, so where's Surya? So look at Rashi, Chafam with base, second to last line from the bottom. Surya, Aram Sova, Usmucha, Liaretz Yisrael, Vikibsha David, Vikibra, the Kidusha, Eretz Yisrael, Shalo Apia Dibor, Ubelo Shishim Revolver, Karle Kibush Yacher. So Surya is Aram Sova, which was conquered in an area right next to Eretz Yisrael, which was conquered by David Amalek. But David Amalek conquered it on his own. In other words, that it was not a defensive war, it was an offensive war that David Amalek waged, not at the behest of the Sanhedrin. It's what's called Kish Yachid. A king under certain circumstances has the ability to go out to war even without the consent of the Sanhedrin. The question is, when he wages such a battle, what is the nature of the territories acquired? Do they become part of Eretz Yisrael? Or as well say, and for our purposes, what that means is, do they become, do they, are they vested with Kedushas Eretz Yisrael or not? So as we're going to see, that is subject to Machlokas. So when it comes to Surya, which is this area conquered by David, which is called Kibush Yochid, top of Chafalif, Maskir Lahem Batin, you can rent houses. You can rent houses to Ta'akum in Surya, Sados, but not fields. Ubechutz Laretz, and outside of Eretz Yisrael, Mochrin Lahem Batim, Umaskirin Sados Tiv Rabbi Meir. And in Chutz Laretz, you could sell an Akum homes, you could rent them fields. These are the words of Rabbi Meir. So we'll say, Rabbi Meir's sheet is as follows. In Eretz Yisrael, you can't rent them houses or fields. In Surya, you could rent them houses, but not fields. And in Chutz Laretz, you could sell houses and rent fields. Again, we'll go through the, the surah of the sheet and the Gemara. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says, Eretz Yisrael, Maskir lahem batim. Rabbi Yossi says, in Eretz Yisrael, you could rent an akum, a home, avalos sados, but you can't rent an akum, a field. Ube Surya, in Surya, mochir lahem batim, you can sell homes, u maskir in sados, and you could rent fields. Ube chutz laretz, and outside of Eretz Yisrael, mochir in elu v'elu. Ultimately, again, chutz laretz, I'm say, chutz laretz, you can do whatever you want. You could sell them fields, you could sell them land, and all is good. And says the Gemara, we'll say, qualification. We'll say, even in a situation where we said that what? That you are permitted to go ahead and rent a home to an Akron. Well, so we just had this in yesterday's daf. Right? Even in a place where they said that you could rent a home to an Akum, we'll say, you are not permitted to rent it to him for the purpose of living in that home. Why? Because it was at the end of the day, I have a concern that if an Akum is living somewhere, he will ultimately come to take, bring Avod Zara into that home. And that is problematic. I remember again, because even though the Akum is renting it, a rental as we've already defined in a previous sugya, the rental is owned by the Jew. I should say, right? The title rests with the Jew. As such, again, even though the Akum is renting it and the Akum has full rights of usage, bringing in Avodah Zarah into that rented home is the equivalent of the Jew allowing Avodah Zarah to be brought into his home, which of course is incredibly problematic. As the Pasuk says, you shall not bring an abomination into your home. And I both say every place, Lo Yaskir Es Hamerchatz, you cannot rent a bathhouse to a Nanju or to an Akum. Why? Mepneshu Nikres Nikrashmo. Because I both say a bathhouse is known by the name of the Jew. Now look at Rashi for just a moment, almost right across in Rashi. Mepneshu Nikres Al Shmo, Vaharoa. So I both say, so the assumption is, rent my bathhouse to a Jew, what's going to happen? To a non-Jew, what's going to happen? He's going to operate it on Shabbos. <clears throat> the issue with that is that the bathhouse is 
known by my name. He's known by the name of the Jew. And therefore, says Rashi, Someone who sees that they're heating up water there on Shabbos, Omer, Shabalonim Shluchen Shlisrohim. We'll assume that what? The Balan or or the bathhouse attendants are in fact working for me. So we'll say, herein lies the fundamental machlokis between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yossi regarding renting slash selling property and fields in Eretz Yisrael. So the sheet of Rabbi Meir, no renting houses and fields in Eretz Yisrael. In Surah, in Surya, you could rent a home, but not a field. In Chutz Laretz, you could sell homes and rent fields. Rabbi Yossi says, in Eretz Yisrael, you could rent homes, but not fields. In Surya, you could sell homes and rent fields. And in Chutz Laretz, you could do whatever you want. Right, Chutz Laretz, you could sell everything, you could rent everything, absolutely no problem. Fine. So let's see. So now we're going to analyze this. Says the Gemara. But let's say first we're going to go through the Shita, <coughs> ultimately again of Rabbi Meir. So we'll say, what did Rabbi Meir say? My answer, Lama Sados. So let's remember again. In Rabbi Meir's Shita, Rabbi Meir holds you can't rent fields, excuse me, you can't rent houses, nor can you rent fields to an Akum. But in Eretz Yisrael, but the way that it reads, the way that the Mishnah reads is, Eima skirlem batim beret Yisrael, vein sarach lomar sados. You can't rent a house to an akum in Eretz Yisrael. Vein sarach lomar, what does vein sarach lomar mean? Right? And it goes without saying, you can't rent a field. So we'll say, when you say it goes without saying, what does that mean? And it's obvious that you can't rent a field. Says the Gemara, I don't understand what's obvious about that. My Eintracht Lomar Sados. Why, why would it be so obvious that you can't rent a field? Meaning, what, what's the pshat? Or is, we'll say, really what the Gemara is asking is, why can't I rent a field to an Akum and Eretz Yisrael? Remember, not selling. We already established selling. Remember again, selling is already yesterday's daf. Why can't I sell property to an Akum? Right? Because the Pasuk says, you can't give them parking. Going to give them, you can't give them land in Eretz Yisrael. So that I know. But what's so passionate that I can't rent a field? So I'll say, watch this. So Ilema Mishum Dispei Tarti. Maybe you're going to say that, but I'll say because <clears throat> maybe because the rental of a field to an Akum has two elements to it. Chani as Karka. Rabbi will say one is. One is because ultimately, again, you're giving them a, straw, a portion in the land. The chada de kamafka le mi meiser. And also maybe the other issue is that what? By renting it to the akum, I remove the obligation of meiser from the land. I will say, now this is a very interesting havamina. Because again, everyone understands that, of course, if you go out and you sell land to an akum, the, well, I shouldn't say everyone. The, I, if I sell land to an akum, maybe that removes kidusha sa'aretz. Now the Gemara is introduced entertaining the possibility that even rental of land in Akum will go ahead and remove Kiddusha Saaretz ultimately from that land by exempt the produce from Meiser. So the issue with renting land is twofold. Number one, you're giving the Akum a stronghold. You're giving him a portion of the land, a rental of the land. And number two, you are ultimately causing the crops to be exempted from Meiser. So therefore, maybe that's why the Mishnah says... You can't rent them houses, and all, uh, certainly you can't rent them fields. I will say why. Because if you rent a field, there are two issues. Meaning if you rent a home, it's one issue. If you rent a field, it's two issues. If you rent a home, what's the one issue? of You're giving them land. That's the one issue. If you rent to them a field, it's two issues. What are the two issues? I will say. Number one, number two, you're exempting the produce from Trumas and Maitis. Ihachi, batim nami ikatarti. See, I both say that if you rent a home, there's also two issues. What are the two issues? Chanias karka. I both say one is the fact that you are giving an akum land in Eretz Yisrael. The chada de kamafka lemi mezuzah. I both say the other issue is that what? If I rent my home to an akum, then what? exempted the home from mezuzah. In other words, the home is losing out on the opportunity ultimately again to have the mezuzah. And maybe that's why I can't go ahead and rent the property to an akum. To which the says, no, no, no. I'm going to say, mezuzah chovas hadaru. We'll say, mezuzah is not a din in the chavza. Mezuzah is a din in the gavra. Right? 
Mezuzah Rabosa is not an obligation upon the home. Mezuzah is an obligation upon the individual. I, as a meaning of Rabosa, Vaharaya, the Raya is if I have a home that no one lives in, there is no obligation to put up a mezuzah. It is only once I am living in a home that's what? That I have an obligation to put a mezuzah in it. Therefore, again, if I go ahead, and I rent my home to a Gentile, we don't see it, or as I should say to an Akum, we don't see it as if I am depriving my home of the opportunity to perform the mitzvah of mezuzah. The home is simply exempted, why? Because I am not living there. Look at Rashi, Chova Sadarhu, for the Chova Sabayis. But this is actually very important. The mitzvah of mezuzah is an obligation upon upon the person who lives there, and not upon the home. Hilchach, leka afka asa dechsev beischa, derech biyascha alma, lemi shenichna sviyotze lesocha, as harachmana. So I'll say, listen to this. So now what comes out is the following, that there's going to be rental of land is interestingly enough going to be treated, in Rabbi Meir's view, more stringently than the renting of a home. Why? Because when you rent a home, when you rent a home, there's one issue, which is what? Lo sechanem, lo sitenam chanio, right? That you're giving, you're giving property to, a, to an akum and aritzi. So I both say, understand, even though you're not selling it, the idea is when you rent something to someone, they have ownership rights, quasi-ownership rights in that object. In Rabbi Meir's view, therefore, you can't rent a home to a Gentile in Eretz Yisrael. But a, Beyond that, there's a bigger problem of renting of renting land. Bigger problem of renting land. Number one, there's the same issue of renting a home of Los Sechanim. And what? There's a second issue. I'll say, what's the second issue? The second issue is Hafkaos, Chumas, and Maestros. That apparently, in Rabbi Meir's view, when you rent land to and the Akum has control of that land and he is the one who is planting and harvesting that produce, that produce is effectively exempted from Chumos and Maestros. So you are doing something that is causing Eretz Yisrael produce to be exempted from Chumos and Maestros and in Rabbi Meir's worldview, that is not a good thing. That's why, that's why again, Rabbi Meir phrases it, in Maskir Lam Batim Eretz Yisrael, you can't rent them houses in Eretz Yisrael. Ve'in tzarech lamar sados. And it goes without saying that you can't rent them fields. Because there's one problem with renting them a home, while there are two problems with renting them fields. B'sruya. So we're just going through now Rabbi Meir Shita. What did Rabbi Meir say in Surya? Now in Surya, Rabbi Meir said you can rent them homes, but not fields. Rent them homes, but not fields. So says the Gemara, Maishna mechira delo, bishrim de mechira de Eretz Yisrael. So we'll say, why can't I sell? Why can't I sell, right? Why can't, why can't I go ahead and sell them property in a, I mean, we'll say, so in Surya, I could rent the home. But yet, we can infer from that, that's what? I can't sell it. I can't sell it. So I, but I can't sell it. Why not, says the Gemara. So, why can't I go ahead and what? Why can't I go ahead and sell them the home? Because I will say, ultimately, again, I have a concern that's what? I have a concern that I might come to go ahead. And I will say, I just want to point out, all of these dinim of Mechira in Eretz Yisrael are also, lest you come to go ahead and the property. The real Iker prohibition over here is sale of land. The Sechira, the renting of the land, is a Gzera, lest you come to sell. Man, that's all. That's all what this is about. Because I will say, one, one on a technical level, one is not over the issue. So when one goes ahead and rents property, because the title still remains with the Jewish owner, all of this is exera lest you come to sell. So now the Gemara is asking as follows. Therefore, again, in Surah, <coughs> in Surah, according to every mayor, I have the ability to go ahead and rent and rent a house. Why can't I sell the house? Because it was if there's a concern that I may come to what? I may come to go ahead and rent them. Pro- excuse me. I may come to sell property in Eretz Yisrael. That's the concern. I don't understand if that's the case. But why not go ahead? As you say, so here we just said, you see on a attack. Level, you should be able to sell a house in Surya to an Akum. But yet the Mish- Rabbi Meir says, you can't sell it, but you could rent it. I ask the Gemara, why can't you sell it? We're concerned that if we let you sell a house in Surya, you may come to what? You may come to what? You may come to sell a house in Eretz Yisrael. Well, if that's the case, why don't you say, if that's the case, then 
Don't you say you can't rent a house in Syria lest you what? Lest you what? Come to go ahead and rent a house in Eretz Yisrael, right? To which the Gemara says, to which the Gemara says as follows. Um, right? I'll say, I skipped an important Rashi. Look at the first Rashi in the Mishnah for just a moment. I'm sorry. I'm just taking you back for one moment because I realized I left this piece out. A maskir in Batim Rashi says, Lovi kachav meretz Yisra gzeira mishum mechira. De iser daorai sehi sheno usein lahem chaniya bekarka. So I'll say, I, I neglected this. It's very important. Meikar adin. There is no iser daorai sehi on renting a home to an akum in Eretz Yisra. The iser daorai is what Rabbi say in the sale of property. That goes back to what we learned yesterday. That's lo sechanim. You can't sell property to an akum in Eretz Yisrael. What's over here is the Mishnah is teaching me there is a gzera, the rabbinic gzera, so that you don't come to violate the Isra Dorai, says what Rabbi say that you can't rent property to an akum either. The shaylo, the machlokis, and the Mishnah between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yossi is what the scope of the rabbinic gzera is. So therefore, and that's the, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm sure you understood that, but I, I, I should have articulated that better. So I'm say, now we fast forward a little bit. Now we come to Rabbi Meir Shita in Surya. So what happened in Surya? In Surya now, Rabbi Meir says that you can go ahead and rent homes, but not fields. So what's the pshat? So it says the Gemara, well, you can only rent, but you can't sell. Now, why can't you go ahead and sell a property? Why can't you sell property in Surya? So the Gemara says, lest you come to sell, a property in Eretz Yisrael. I, if that's the case, why don't you go ahead and say that you can't rent a property in Surya either, lest you come to rent a property to the Akum in Eretz Yisrael, to which the Imran I'll tell you why. He go for Gzira. Because of us, the whole notion of the prohibition of renting property to an Akum is already a Gzira. Should we, Rabbi, make a Gzira on top of a Gzira? In other words, what's the Imran what the Gemara is saying over here is, as we just said before, remember, what's the Iker Isser? The Iker Isser is, I am not permitted to sell property to an Akhenaris Isser. I want to point out, everyone agrees on that principle. Everyone agrees on the Isser Dor Aiso. You are not allowed to sell property a Batim and Sodos to an Akhenaris Isser. The Machlokis and Rabbi Meir and Rabbi, and Rabbi Yossi is on the scope of the Gzeira. So says Rabbi Meir like this, in Surya, you could rent homes, you could sell homes, because we're concerned that if you sell a home in Surya, we're going to come to sell a home to an Akum in Eretz Yisrael. Aye, why don't we say, so therefore you can rent. Why don't we say that if we let you rent a home in Surya, you'll come to rent a home in Eretz Yisrael, because to which I may will say, listen, because now you're piling gazeros on top of each other. The whole idea of not being able to rent a home in Eretz Yisrael to an akum is a gzera. To now say that you also can't rent a home in Surya, lest you come to rent a home in Eretz Yisrael, is a gzera le gzera. It's a gzera on top of a gzera, we'll say, and that we don't do. I have a hoschi rosada de besurya. But one second. I will say, what about the fact that Rabbi Meir says, <coughs> Rabbi Meir does say that in Surya, you are not permitted to go ahead and rent a field to an Akum. That's Rabbi Meir does say. Both say, that's the case. They say, what about the fact that in Surya, Rabbi Meir says you can't rent a field. And I will say, renting a field seems to be a, what we call the Gzera Gzera. Remember again, it's easy what we're saying is that what? You can't rent a field in Surya lest you what? Lest in Eretz Yisrael. Renting a field in Eretz Yisrael is in and of itself a gzera, lest you come to sell it. And yet we're saying you still can't do it. Hasam lav gzera. I will say in Surya it's not a gzera, a gzera. Why? Kasavar kibush yachid shmei kibush. Oh, I will say listen to this. Have you made a hold? Remember we mentioned this in the Mishnah? Aram Tzova, Surya, was conquered by David Melech without the prior permission from the Sanhedrin. So there's Machlokes. Does Surya, is Surya counted as part of Eretz Yisrael? Does Kiddush Eretz Yisrael or not? Rabbi Meir holds it does. He holds Kibush Yachid. The 
conquering of the individual king, in fact, does endow the land with the sanctity of Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, what? Surya is Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, what Rabbi say? Whatever Xeros apply in Eretz Yisrael will ultimately apply in Surya, and it's not a Xeril Xeril. That's what Rabbi Meir ultimately holds that what? You can't go ahead and rent the field. I, why does he only apply that then by fields and not by homes? I'll tell you why. In Aram Sova, in Surya, so the rabbis mostly extended the Xero Severity, so with one exception. So in homes, Rabbi said there's only one issue, which is Lo Sechanim. So they Extend the gzera. So in Eretz Yisrael you can't rent a home, in Asuria you can rent a home to an akum. Sados Rabosai feels when it comes that there are two issues. Remember again, what, what's the fields? The issue of Rabosai is number one: if you sell a field, what happens? And number two, number two, half cost trumas and maestros. So a field Rabosai which has two issues: if you sell it to an akum, ultimately what we extend the gzera of renting a field even to Aram Sova, Surya. Fine. We'll say weiter. Gazru. I'm sorry. Bachutz um, Laaretz. So what's the memory again? We're going through Rabbi Meir Shita. Where does Rabbi Meir hold the Chutz Laaretz? In Chutz Laaretz, Rabbi Meir holds Mochel and Batim. You could sell homes and you could rent fields. This is Shita Rabbi Meir. Watch this. So what's we'll say? So here's the interesting question. Why is it now? I, in Chutz Laaretz, the truth is, in Chutz Laaretz, it should be all bets are off. Right? Meaning there, there, are, there are no issues. Rabbi Meir still holds that you could sell homes, you could rent fields, but what? But what? You can't sell fields. Why not? Surish Limar answers, Bachutz Laaretz, Sada, the Ispe Tarti Gazu Barabanon, Patim, the last Pu Tarti Al Gazu Barabanon. So what's Rabbi Meir is very interesting. He says, even in Chutz Laaretz, when it comes to Sados, Rabbi Osai, where the issue of selling Sados to an Akum, Fraught with two issues, lo sechaneim, and have caused shumas and maestros exempting the land from tithes. So because of that, era carries over even into chutzlar. I will say it's actually dramatic. I will say this may be one of the rare occasions where gzera regarding karka veretz yisrael carries over even into chutzlar. Dramatic. So in order to safeguard the Bosa, in order to go ahead and safeguard the Xera of Eretz Yisrael, we extend the Xera of Sados, which have two issues, to Chutz Laaretz as well. Good. Bosa, now we come to Rabbi Yossi. We're going to pay specific attention to Rabbi Yossi Shita because it's a loch on the mice, as we'll see. Where was it? Where does Rabbi Yossi hold? Sorry, Baruch Atah Adonai, the Hindu Melech Olam, Shakon Yeh B'Tvaro. I'm sorry. Oh, we'll discuss why. We haven't even gotten to it yet. No, in Eretz Yisrael, you can't rent out a house, a gzera, unless you come to sell it. I'm sorry. The, the gzera in Surya is less you come to sell in Eretz Yisrael. Correct. So the gzera, again, remember, in Rabbi Meir Shita, Surya and Eretz Yisrael are the same. There are two reasons for that. Number one, Rabbi Meir holds kibush yachut shmei kibush, and therefore Surya has the same thing of Eretz Yisrael. Number two, even if you don't hold that, the gzera of Surya will ultimately again, I'm sorry, in Rabbi Meir Shita, Rabbi Meir holds you can go ahead and rent houses in Surya because he ultimately holds that Surya is different than Eretz Yisrael, but not Sados. So he carries the gzera of Sados over to Eretz Surya, because it has two issues, but not, but not Batim. But again, the Gzeira of Maskir and Batim and Eretz Yisrael is is a din lest you come to sell. Now Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi holds. Um, I lost my place. Ubechutz Laaret. Right? No. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Baris Yisrael, there's no questions, no questions. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Baris Yisrael, Maskir Lahem Batim. Rabbi so again. Okay, I've the Zara, Dav Chafal, good, okay. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Yossi says as follows. He says, in Eretz Yisrael, we go ahead and, Baris Yisrael, Maskir Lahem Batim. So as Rabbi Yossi Shita is, in Eretz Yisrael, we go ahead and we rent homes. But not Sodos. So we'll say Rabbi Yossi has, different version of the Gzeira. My timer. So we'll say, remember again, everybody agrees that the Deoraisa issue is what? Sale of property. That's what everybody agrees with. That is the Iker issue, to sell property. The Shail is, how do you define the Isr Derabanan? So Rabbi Yossi 
right? That you can go ahead and you could rent homes in Eretz Yisrael. What's the logic? Might so we'll say yet not Sados. My timer, very simple. This Bultarti Kazuburabanan. So Sados ultimately you know, which have two issues. What are the two issues in of Sados? Number one, Los Sikhanim, giving number two, have customers and Mysos. Therefore, again, this Bultarti Kazurabanan. Patim, the last Bultarti, Lo Gazuburabanan. So we'll say Yossi's model, in Rabbi Yossi's model, the halacha is as follows. You could rent homes, but you can't rent fields. Why? I can rent homes because there's only one issue, which is the issue of what? Lo sechain is an issue of so selling property. Fine. So I'm not allowed to sell, but I can rent. When it comes to fields, there are two issues. Issue number one is what? Lo sechain. Issue number two is I have cause. Shumos and Maestros. Ubisurius, what's an Esrabi Yossi Shita in Eretz Yisrael? You can rent homes, but you can't rent fields. Next, what is field in Surya? Ubisurya, Mochrin Batim, Umaskirin Sados. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi holds in Surya, you can sell homes and rent fields. What's the luck? My time, Kasavar, Kibush, Yochid, Loshme Kibush. Because Rabbi Yossi holds that David HaMelech's conquering of Surya was done without the consent of the Sanhedrin, and therefore what? The land, the annex, is not endowed with Kedushas Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, again, Halach Lemaisa, Halach Lemaisa, it is not part of Eretz Yisrael. Because that Kedushas Eretz, because that Rabbi Yossi, you're allowed to sell homes. You're allowed to sell homes. I, why can't you sell fields? The Sada, the Isbu Tarti Gazubu Rabbanon. So, I will say when it comes to fields, where what? You have two issues at play. What are the two issues? Issue number one, again, Lo Sechanim. Issue number two, Hafkaz, Shumos, and Maisros. Then again, the last Bu Tarti Lo Gazubu Rabbanon. So, I'm sorry, Sada, the Isbu Tarti Gazubu Rabbanon. Patum Lo Gazubu Tarti Lo Gazubu Rabbanon. Therefore, Rabbi Yossi holds as follows. In Surya, we hold number one, Kibush Yachad Lo so Surya is not part officially of Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, you could sell homes. You can't sell fields. You can only rent fields. Why? Because fields, there are two issues involved. Number one, Los Sechanim. Number two, have caused Shumos. You could rent them, but you can't sell them, lest you come to sell fields in Eretz Yisrael. Good. Where is Rabbi Yossi held in Chutz Laretz? In Chutz Laretz, Rabbi Yossi held... Mochrin Elu Vi Elu. Rabbi Yossi holds in Chosarts, you could sell whatever you want, fields as well as houses. Good morning, Mr. Schoenfeld. You can sell whatever you want. So, my time, Rabbi say, what's the logic? Kevan de Merchok, Lo Gazvinam. Since Chosarts is far, quote unquote. In other words, Rabbi say, when it comes to Surya, which is right next to Eretz Yisrael, there's a concern that, that whatever people in Surya, see, Rabbi say, people think that Surya is part of Eretz Yisrael. For Reason number one, because it's right next to Eretz Yisrael. Number two, that's what it was conquered by David Amel. Not everybody is well versed in the halachos of kibush yachet shmei kibush lo shmei kibush. Chutz laaretz is far, because and everybody knows that chutz laaretz is not Eretz Yisrael. The truth is, not everybody knows that chutz laaretz is not Eretz Yisrael. That's a different issue, right? But it's far enough that people aren't going to confuse that what happens in chutz laaretz is. Not the same for Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, what Rabbi Osai, but nevertheless, came on the Merchok, lo gazinon. Amr Av Yehuda, Amr Shmuel, halacha ki Rabbi Yossi. Yehuda said, halacha indeed follows Rabbi Yossi. Remember again, Rabbi Osai, what's Rabbi Yossi's shita? Rabbi shita is in Eretz Yisrael. You could rent houses, but not fields. In Surya, you could sell houses and rent fields. And in Chutz Laaretz, you could do whatever you want. You could sell and rent everything. So Rabbi Yehuda said the name of Shmuel. Again, we'll discuss Allah Hamas in just a moment. Shmuel, the Allah Hamas Rabbi Yossi. I'm Rabbi Yossi, if he qualifies it. O bilvad, shalom ya'asena shechuna. Listen, this is interesting. So you could sell off property. You could sell off property, ultimately, again, to... A, to a Gentile, as long as what? As long as you don't make it into a Gentile neighborhood. So I will say, Vekama Shuna, what, what's the definition of a, of a Shuna? What's the definition of a Gentile neighborhood? The Gemara, the Gemara Vekama Shuna, Tana in Shuna Pachus, Bene Adam. So I will say, Shuna is a Mazuman. It's an Akum Mazuman, right? If you have three, if you have three, three Akums living in the same neighborhood, that becomes actually, I will say, what do we know? 
concerned about when it comes to an Akum Shechuna, what are we concerned about? So I'll say, unfortunately, the Gemara recognizing a historical reality, which is that wherever there is a neighborhood of an Akum, we're concerned that it become a staging area for anti-Semitic activity. Therefore, again, you can sell to an Akum as long as it's not made into a Shechuna. So the Gemara says, one second. We're saying we should be concerned for the following. Maybe a Yisrael is going to sell property to an Akum. We'll say in a permitted way. So let's say, again, maybe either is selling a home. In, so we'll say, obviously, when it says that you sell uh, the three outcomes, this is talking about a situation where you're permitted to sell a home. In Rabbi Yossi's view, where can you sell a home? Either where? Surya or? So we'll say in either of those cases, you can't allow a shechuna to be made. You can't sell three properties in proximity, ultimately, again, to an akum. Now we'll say, so why do we be concerned about the following? Let's say I sell one property to an akum, and what does he do? He do? Let's say he's going to subdivide his lot. And let's say he's going to subdivide between his akum buddies, and suddenly, again, I have facilitated of shechuna's akum. I have facilitated the creation, ultimately, again, to which the Gemara says, so the Gemara says, Rabbaye, Alifne Mefaktinan, Alifne de Lifne la Mefaktina. So we'll say, this is not a literal application of this concept. This is why Alifne, Lifne Ever. We'll say, we've had this concept before. Stumbling block, meaning the Gemara says, it's only for direct stumbling block. It's not problematic if I create an, an indirect stumbling block, which I will say means I'm only responsible for circumstances directly in my control. I'm not responsible for remote possibilities that people may execute or not. So therefore, all I know is I can't sell to three Akums within, within proximity to each other. It's not my problem if the Akum takes the property that I sold him, subdivides it amongst two of his other friends, and thereby creates a Shuna. For that, I am responsible. Let's say, take a look at Rashi. Rashi says over here as follows. The Azil, high over the Kochavi, who has been like the tray, Palgi the tray, my Akiva Shlishas, as well, the Ikashkuna. So again, why don't I have to be concerned? Maybe the Akiva is going to take the piece of property that I gave him, split it into three pieces, invite two of his buddies to live there, and suddenly there's a Shkuna to which the Gemara says, Alifle, the Lifle Kiloma, Lukule, high, Lokai Shinan. That far, we'll say, that far, I'm obligated to worry about. So we'll say, so let's talk about this just for a moment. Maisa, the Gemara just told us that we pass in like that we pass in like Rabbi Yossi. So Bosa, indeed, this is how Shulchan Aruch paskins. So Halach is brought down the Shulchan Aruch in Yaradeya. And the Shulchan Aruch writes as follows. I'm going to quote to you: Ein mocher lahem bat in the cell of Sparis Yisrael. You are not permitted to go in a Bosa and sell. This is a Maisa to sell land, to sell homes, and to sell fields. It's Israel to an Akum. Ava maskirin lahem batim velo sados. But I will say, Aloch Lamaisa, you could rent a home to an Akum in Eretz Israel, but you may not rent fields. So I will say, again, remember, what's wrong with renting a field or what's wrong with renting, well, again, you could rent a home. What's wrong with renting a field in Eretz Israel to an Akum? What's wrong with it? Right? The answer is technically. Nothing. This is a gzera. It's a gzera lest you come to sell it. I, why doesn't that, if that's the gzera, they want to make the same gzera by homes just like we do by fields. What's the answer? This beitarti. Homes have one isra, which is about to say if you sell it, lo sechaneim. You're giving an akum a full well, Fields, if you sell it, about to say there are two problems. Number one, lo sechaneim and what? You're exempting the land or you are, lift you are, not exempting is the wrong word. Or severe word, not exempting, but removing. You're removing. You're extricating. Your 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 arm. Uprooting. Oh, you are, thank you. You are uprooting the kedusha from the land. So therefore, I say because selling a field has two isurim with it. Therefore, the gzera is stronger. So Allah comes like Rabbi Yossi. You can rent homes in Eretz Yisrael, but you can't rent fields to an akum. How we go on? Umochrim batim. I'm sorry, Ubisuria, and I was talking about Surya. Mochrim Batim Umaskirim Sado. You could sell homes, you could sell homes, right? Because I will say again, Rabbi hold Kibushakalosh 
kibush, and you could rent fields. Again, the xera of fields still applies even in Surya. Why? Because again, of the severity. And lastly, you could do whatever you want. You could sell fields. You could sell homes. The xera does not apply at all in Eretz Yisrael. So we'll say halach l'aisa. We pass like Rabbi Yossi. Beautiful. Let's go weiter. Says the Gemara. Af b'makom shomer lahaskir. Remember again, the Mishnah said even in a situation where you have the right to go ahead and rent a home, you can't rent it lebeis dira. Right? We'll say you can't go ahead and what? You can't allow an akum to live there. Right? Why? Well, we didn't say why. Right? You can't lola beis dira. Amru. Well, I'm sorry, we did say why. Out of a concern that if Yaakum lives there, what is he going to do? He's going to bring his Avodah Zara in there. Says the Gemara, So you're telling me ultimately again that there's a place, that there are places where they did not rent homes to an Akum. Amud Beis, Ustama Kirabi Meir. So I'll say, so it seems to be again, that ultimately again, so it seems to be over here that there were places in which they did not rent homes to in order to go ahead and live there. And therefore the Stam Mishnah Bosa reflects the view of Rabbi Meir. Di Rabbi Yossi, Bechol Duchtamogi. Because I'll say in Rabbi Yossi's view, you do have the ability to go ahead and tell so What the Gemara is saying over here is that statement of that we don't rent them places in accordance ultimately again with Rabbi Meir. Look at Rashi. Because Rabbi Meir is the opinion who says that in Eretz Yisrael we don't go ahead and rent homes. Because if it's Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yossi, ultimately again there are situations in which you would have the ability ultimately to rent a home to the Yakum. Fine. So remember again the Mishnah went on to say that in all places in all places, you can't rent a merchatz. You can't rent a bathhouse to an akum. Why Rabbi say? Because the bathhouse is known as the bathhouse of the Jew. And in the event that there is malacha that is happening there on Shabbos, what's going to happen? People are going to assume that it is the Jew who is running his bathhouse on Shabbos. Tanya, Rabbi Shimon Amil Omer, Lo Yaskir, Lo Yiskar, Adam Merchatz, Lo Ovei Kochavim. A person should not rent out his bathhouse to an Akum. Mepnei Shenikra Al Shmo. I will say you should know this halacha. You know is not unique to an idolater. The truth is this halacha would apply to any Gentile. You can't rent out your bathhouse to a Gentile. Why? Because I must say, ultimately, again, the Gentile is going to open, keep the bathhouse open on Shabbos, and everyone knows that's Silber's bathhouse. Everyone knows at the end of the day that that's a Jew. And the Akum is doing Malacha there on Shabbos and Yom Tif. So again, what is this an issue of? As much as an issue of Marasai, meaning at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not doing anything, right? And the guy is paying me a flat fee at the end of the day, again, whether he's open on Shabbos or not. This is an issue of Marasai. So the Gemara says, Avalakusi Ma. Now, this is true if I'm renting it out to an Akum. What about if I'm renting it out to a Kusi? It sounds like again, sorry, now say, remember again, the kusim are interesting. What are kusim? Kusim are gerim. They're converts. What's the issue? The issue is that their conversion has always been historically suspect. Right, I'm say because again, they converted because historically because of an outbreak of lions in Eretz Yisrael, but then were still found to be worshipping idolatry. So kusim always have this very interesting status in halacha. Apparently, any halacha that they do in fact adhere to, they're starker than the rest of us. But pretty much they reject Torah Shabbat Peh. So because of that, their status is somewhat questionable. So it says the Gemara, so what about, so now you're telling me I can't rent out my bathhouse to Akum because he's going to keep it open on Shabbos and people are going to think that I'm running my business on Shabbos. What about to Akusi? So the Gemara says, so, so we can infer the fact that the Bryson only is the prohibition by an akum tells you that by a kusi it's mutter. So by the kusi, my shari kusi, Amar. So one second, there's a problem with the kusi. What's wrong with the kusi? Amar avid be malacha becholo shamoid. But say even if a kusi won't work on Shabbos, Rashi says over here. Look at Rashi. What's that kusi? Lo avid malacha be Shabbos. Avah becholo shamoid avid to the magic self from lochashi. So they will say, a kusi won't work on Shabbos because Shabbos is the raisa. But a kusi will work, will keep the bathhouse open on Chalamayid. Why will say? Because some nations of the Isra Malacha and Chalamayid, we learned out, we learned out, we did So 
Kusi. Even if you want to say it's not a problem for the Kusi to keep, he won't keep it open on Shabbos, he will keep it open on Chalamayid. And I will say, isn't that the same problem? That people will see my bathhouse open on Chalamayid in what? They will attribute that bathhouse activity to me, the Jew. To which the Gemara says, well, that's not a problem. Anon nami avdinon. It's okay to keep the bathhouse open on Chalamayid. And I will say, remember again, remember again, Chalamayid, any what malach is permitted on Chalamayid, anything that is necessary for the moed itself. Bathing is a necessity for the yamta, for the moed. Therefore, again, no problem with keeping up on a Chalamayid. Aval, sadeu lo ovid kuchavimai. So what about, again, renting my field to an akum? What about renting my field to an akum? What's, what's the status there? So we'll say, this obviously is very interesting because we just finished this conversation before. So we're going to ask that just a moment. What's the halacha? Shari. I will say, right? So we'll say, what it seems to be over here, what the Gemara is asking is, Legabe Shabbos. What's going to be the issue regarding renting my field? That should be permitted. I will say, and remember, this, leaving aside the Mishnah, I will say, let's say we're talking about a field in Chutzlaret. So remember again, let's say we pass a Rabbi Yossi in Chutzlaret, so you could sell fields, you could rent fields. Can I rent a field? So here's what we just got finished saying. I can't rent my bathhouse to an Akum. Why not? Why not? Shabbos, he'll go Shabbos issue. Because he's going to operate it on Shabbos. Everyone knows that it's my bathhouse. If they see it open, they're not going to know that I have a rental agreement with the Akum. They're just going to assume that I'm operating my business on Shabbos. Fine. What about my field? Can I. Yes, it's permitted. Why? We'll say, watch this. My time, Arise, Arisuse Kadeh. Because they're both saying. Everyone knows when it comes to fields, more often than not, people engage in sharecropping arrangements. We will say, what's a sharecropper's arrangement? There's a fixed fee. He pays me X amount of dollars or some fixed amount of the crop. We will say, I have nothing to do with his working. If I'm the owner of the field and I have a sharecropping arrangement, I have nothing to do with his working of the field. He either pays me a fixed fee for the year or a fixed percentage of the crop, which means what, I will say, whenever he works, he works. It's his problem. So because sharecropping is a normal arrangement, if somebody walks by my field on Shabbos and they see the Akum working on it, their default assumption will be what? Will be what? Not that Silber's workers are working for him on Shabbos. It's going to be what? That the Akum must have engaged in a sharecropping arrangement and the Akum is working for himself on Shabbos. Well, so take, take a quick look at Rashi. Rashi just points out when we're speaking about the fact that I can rent my field to a guy to an akum that's obviously I was talking about independent the issues previously mentioned like for example this is all happening in Chotzlar's so, so we'll say, if somebody sees an Akum working my field, the default assumption is not that he's working for me, but he's working for himself as a sharecropper. To which the Gemara says, well, I don't understand if that's the case. Merchatz nami amri arise arisuse ka'avid. Why don't you just say, well, say same thing in the bathhouse? Maybe there is a quote-unquote sharecropping arrangement in the bathhouse. So we'll say, in other words, maybe we worked out some type of arrangement in the bathhouse who is just paying me a flat yearly fee or some type, or you fight to flat yearly fee, or some other type of arrangement where I don't really have anything to do with when he's working or how he's using a bathhouse. To which the Gemara says, no. Arisa de Merchatz lo avdi inshi. The reality is that at the end of the day, sharecropping is a normative arrangement for fields, but what? It was not the normative arrangement for bathhouses. To which the Gemara says, Tanya. Well, that's just one more line. Rav Shimon Allah Omer. So we'll, just, we'll, we'll start this. We have Bryce that Rabbi Shimon says that you cannot rent your field to a kusi. Why? Because it's known by the name of the owner. The owner. And it was going to be the issue. Now, the, so the kusi shomer shabbos, that's not a problem. But what? He's going to do malacha there in Chalabah. So, but we'll say, what's going to be the halach with Ovid Kochavim? So that should be permitted. My shari, the Amri Arise Arisusi Avi. Because we'll when it comes to a field, having an Akam is even easier. Why? Because if the Akam is working in the field on Shabbos, so we'll say, 
of the time, we say that what? He's a sharecropper, which essentially means he is an independent contractor. He's working for himself. If that's the case, ultimately, why don't you say that a kusi is also a sharecropper? Top of Chav Beis. Arisus say that Reb Shem and Elazar, lastly, will say ultimately again, Reb Shem and Elazar does not hold that these sharecropping arrangements were the norm. Take a look at Rashi for just a moment. Arisus Reb Shem and Elazar, lastly, say, watch this. I'm going to do this very quickly. Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold that, that share crapping is the normative way. I, if that's the case, if Rabbi Shimon doesn't hold that you could assume that the Ovikham is a share cropper, then why does he allow you to your field to share crapping? It's amazing. Ella, Ovid Kochava, my time motor. If that's you're not holding that the Ovid Kochavim is normally a sharecropper. That's why you could do Malacha on Shabbos. So, why, so ultimately, again, why could you rent this field? And say, watch this. Damrina Levit Sayis. Because I will say, if you rent out your field to an Akum and what? And what? You tell him you can't work the field on Shabbos. What's going to happen? He'll listen. He'll listen. The Akum will listen. I kusin ami Amrina Levit Sayis. So, what happens if you rent out your field to a Kusi and you tell him not to work on Shabbos? He should also listen. Da, no, the Gemara says he won't listen. Why? Because you know what the Kusi is going to say? Because the Kusi is Jewish, quasi-Jewish, what is he going to say? Don't tell me what to do. I know more than you. You see, see, by the Akum, if you tell the Akum not to work on Shabbos, what does the Akum say? Okay, right? You tell a Jew to do something, then what he's going to say? Who are you? Who are you, right? I know more than you do. And even the Kuzi is going to say, I know more than you. And therefore, what I will say, and therefore the Kuzi is not going to say, we'll stop over here for today. Again, I'm, I'm kind of stopping mid-discussion. But the idea of us, we'll pick up with this again. What we're stuck in the middle of is this incredible tension, ultimately, again, between renting a field to an Akum versus renting a field to a Kuzi. We thought renting a field to an Akum was the easy part because Ari Suse, Ari Se Ovid. He's a sharecropper. Everyone He's an independent guy. Kusi becomes a bit more complicated. Shabbos doesn't seem to be a problem. Chalamayit is, is a problem. We just got finished saying before Chalamayit is not a problem. Comes along now, Rabbi Shimon al and says, we can't assume sharecropping. Sharecropping ultimately is the default assumption. And Amir Hashem will resolve this. Amir Hashem tomorrow morning. Shkoyach.